Hello, this is the Element 4 Amateur Extra License Exam Study. We're in sub-element 3, Charlie, and we are going to be talking about an unhappy sun. So question number one is, what is the cause of short-term radio blackouts? And those are going to be solar flares. Solar flares are going to be the major result of those blackouts, and you can get lost in some serious serious rabbit holes when looking up this information on the web. This is one of the current, more current images from, uh, it's not really a current image at all. I think this is stock photo, but this is an unhappy sun. It's got all kinds of stuff happening all over it. And so coronal mass ejections, sunspots, all that jazz. So that's what we're talking about in this section is a very unhappy sun, but that's okay because we like it. At solar maximum number 25, while this is being recorded, it has been exciting at times. So what is indicated by a rising A index or K index? And that is increasing disturbance of the geomagnetic field. If we go to this page, and of course I did this some of this stuff last night, but if you can see the, the A index and K index right here, as that K index rises, K index is about a two-hour measurement of the magnetic field, so you can get, see the more recent happenings, and all the way up through 9 is greatly disturbed. Now the A index is a little bit different. It is an average over 24 hours of the K index. So this just gives you an overall picture of how the day went. And you can see some other things over here when you're looking at those, the solar flux index. As these go up, you get things knocked down in your propagation. But as these go up, you'll see better propagation. So we've, we've been in this range right here for quite some time here in the uh, solar maximum. And then as some of those sunspots rotate to the back of the sun, you'll see it drop down. And that is the fun of amateur radio. Which of the following signal paths is most likely to experience high levels of absorption when the A index or K index is elevated and that's through the auroral oval now if you go back over here to the solar indices if these are up you're in a storm of somehow so this is a, a real severe storm and that's where you might see something like this where the auroral oval comes into place now I can get you a closer look at that right here in that aurora oval there, that's going to be almost a split in that magnetic field, and that is where the majority of the aurora action is going to happen, and it is a great disturbance. So that is what that uh, oval looks like. It's, it is an oval. What does the value of B sub Z represent? Now, this could be a confusing question, but B sub Z, they're just telling you that is B sub Z. That's how you would read that. I learned that yesterday. I should I was reminded of it yesterday. North-south strength of the interplanetary magnetic field. Now, if we go look at this next image, you'll see the north-south. B Z is that north-south of the magnetic field. And you can see in front of that, that is what is being bombarded by the sun's magnetic field. So it completely distorts our atmosphere. And you can see those little aurora ovals. It's right there inside of grandma's bun. What orientation of B sub Z increases the likelihood that charged particles from the sun will cause disturbed conditions? It says southward. So I'm assuming that that is for the United States. So coming southward down from the North Pole is going to affect us greater. Now that's an assumption. I could not find anything to explain it better. 
but I hope that I explain that for you pretty good. Okay, the rest of these are um, things you'll just want to remember. How does the VHF UHF radio horizon compare to the geographic horizon? And if you remember from your technician exam, which might have been a long time ago, but the atmosphere refracts those VHF UHF signals just 15%, so approximately 15% farther than what you could see line of sight. Which of the following indicates the greatest solar flare intensity? And that is a class X. <clears throat> class X is going to be your big time solar flare intensity. Which of the following is the space weather term for an extreme geomagnetic storm? And we saw over here at the solar indexes uh, somewhere geomagnetic of a five is um, the greatest. Nope, this site didn't mention that. All oh, snap. Okay, well, daggum. All right, so a G5 is going to be the space term for that extreme geomagnetic storm. Thought I had an example, but we'll keep rolling on. What type of data is reported by amateur radio propagation reporting networks? That is digital mode in CW signals. So the that network could be the reverse beacon network. And you can see right here, looking at 40 meters over the course of Earth, it's giving me some signals that 40 meters is, is doing its work. But let's go look at 20 meters. How's it looking these days? All right, so within the last 10 hours, there's been some good stuff going on here. Let's go look at 10 meters and see. Oh, look at there. You can see. So this is information that is collected via CW or digital mode. So that was CW. Um, you can look at uh, some other sites that do some other digital modes. You can look at Whisper if you want to look at some Whisper. And that is a propagation reporting network as well because it shows propagation and uses your call sign through a digital mode. What does the term 304A solar parameter measure? So 304A is UV emissions, and they are at 304 angstroms, that really, really, really tiny, tiny wavelength, correlated to the solar flux index. You can Google 304A solar parameter, read all you want about it, but that is what it is. Okay, so here is a program that I have used. I don't have a picture of it because it's not on this computer, but what does VOACAP software model? It is HF propagation. Now, a program that we used VOACAP with was WinLink in sending email through radio waves. And so VOACAP software can kind of tell you, is this going to be a good path or a bad path? Which of the following is indicated by a sudden rise in radio background noise across a large portion of the HF spectrum? And that is going to be a coronal mass ejection impact or a solar flare has occurred. And if you play radio on the regular, we're talking daily or every other day, you usually get used to noticing some of those changes. So when that sun gets angry and starts messing with our geomagnetic portion of the Earth and sends all that beautiful radiation our way, that's when things get kind of tricky. The solar flux changes, the, the, uh, the way the LUF and the MUF tend to cross each other where there's just a complete radio blackout. And if you want to get into that kind of stuff, there are a couple good YouTube channels out there that go over the solar happenings and solar news. So I'm Robbie W1RCP. If this has been helpful and even slightly entertaining to help you get through this exam, please like the video and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Have a good one in 73.